Welcome to my workshop. In today's video, we're going to be making an upgrade to the fence of my table saw. And the table saw in question is Evolution Rage 5S. However, the whole principle of the upgrade will fit absolutely most um, fences for table saws. So let's get started. The upgrade itself is to give me more versatility when it comes to my table saw, so I can attach different jigs, but also greater stability as well and larger working surface, which you'll see um, later on in the video. So what materials I'm gonna be using? I've got MDF in my workshop, 18 millimeter boards and nine millimeter boards. It needs to be nice, thick and sturdy. And that's the boards I've got in a size that will fit my project. However, if you've got, for example, chipboard, that will work as well. Or if you're very posh, you can use 18 millimeter plywood if you can afford it. For me, it's MDF. So first step we're gonna do, I'm actually gonna laminate the nine millimeter MDF board and the 18 millimeter MDF board. And that will allow us to create a nice and thick fence with some extra options, which we'll see later on. Now for any glue ups, I use these handy supports. It's so much easier to clamp the material down. And as you probably guessed it, I've got a video on those. If you are doing a lot of glue ups, definitely make them super easy to make and super cheap as well but they will make a massive difference, trust me. You'll see that in just a second. Plenty of glue, making sure we're gonna have nice and strong connection. Now it's time to cut out all the pieces to the correct sizes. Now don't worry, I'm gonna have a cut list for you down below in the description of this video. However, the cut list is obviously dedicated for this specific table saw that I've got, which is the Evolution Rage 5S. When cutting anything, think about your PPE, especially when you're dealing with MDF, as you definitely don't want to have that dust in your lungs. In my case, I'm just using a mask from Trend, very nice and comfortable. If you're interested in that, I'm gonna leave a link to it down below in the description. Right then, now it's time to cut everything to the correct length. And for that, as you can see, I'm just gonna be using my mitre saw. As every single piece will be 70 centimeters long, I've set up a stop block just to speed up the process and have accurate cuts every single time. Okay, let's start putting things together. And now, as you can see on my fence just over here, I've got two bolts. These are the adjustment bolts for the fence itself, making sure it's straight and it works correctly. Now, I don't want um, my fence to go all the way here, so, more or less, it will be over only one bolt. So what I need to do, I need to make sure I've got a nice hole in the back of this to accommodate that bolt there. It will also give me an ability to actually lock my fence against that bolt, so it's not gonna shift on me, okay? However, the friction fit, when everything is together, uh, should make sure that uh, the fence will not move, okay? I've got a five millimeter spacer here, and that's exactly the thickness of that bolt. I'm just gonna whack it at the back here, just like so. These are the sides of this. I just want to have everything in the correct position. And now to transfer the location of that bolt, just gonna use a hammer. There you go, not sure if you're gonna be able to see it, but there's a mark there. And I'm gonna use a forstner bit to create a hole for this to hide inside. Okay, the next step is actually very important. So that's gonna be our main fence. This is the glue up that we've got. That's just a sacrificial piece underneath there, okay? So I'm gonna lay that on. Now, 
these two boards will be wrapping over the existing fence of our table saw. Okay, and what I'm going to do now, I'm going to marry them up all together. That line there is beyond the level of my fence, of my table saw fence, so that strip is above. And to that strip, we need to make several holes to allow for the main fence to attach to. And what I want to have is to have fixings in the same place on each side of the fence. So that will allow me to detach the main fence from this and place it on either side of the table saw so fence. And first of all, I'm gonna use a four millimeter um, bit just to indicate the position of the holes in every single piece, making sure they're the same everywhere. For the next part, you're gonna need some furniture fittings, okay? Either or hex drive head nut or something like this or something like this, okay? It all depends what you've got in your workshop or what you can buy locally. Now, I'm gonna use these, okay? I'm gonna pre-drill the holes in both of the smaller pieces here and I'm gonna drive in these with a bit of CA glue to make sure they actually stick inside. To attach the fence itself, we're gonna use some bolts and we need to install a washer as well that will go on the fence itself. Therefore, I'm gonna use a force a bit in all four holes to make a recess so the head of the bolt will actually be inside of our fence so our fence is nice and flat. And we're gonna do this on both sides of the fence here and over here. As you remember, the fence will be interchangeable on both sides of our table saw fence. With the slots completed with a forced bit on both sides, I can pre-drill the holes with a larger drill bit to accommodate the bolt itself. In my case, it's seven millimeters. Now it's time to install the washers inside. And to do that, I'm just gonna use just a tiny bit of CA glue. Now in the fence itself, I'm gonna create a channel on one side of it for a T-track that will allow us to add different types of jigs and a feather board. Now let's install the T-track. It's time for a bit of action with my portable router table. Now we're gonna use a router table for two jobs where it comes to this fence, okay? On the other side, opposite to the T-track, on the bottom, we're gonna create a channel, okay? And I'm gonna use my router to do just that. You'll see what for later on in the video. So for this job, I'm just using a straight router bit. Um, I believe it's 16 millimeters in diameter. The distance for our slot is 15 millimeters, so that will be absolutely perfect. When this job will be done, I'm gonna swap this bit for a chamfer bit. And we're gonna add a small chamfer to the bottom of our fence on the side where we've got our T-track. And now it's time to put everything together. First of all, I'm just gonna pre-drill the holes, countersink and drive in some screws to connect the three pieces together. Now to the fence, I'm just gonna apply a bit of furniture wax. Okay, let's install the fence itself now. Thank you. 
And one last final addition to the whole thing, a T-track right at the top as well for any other potential jigs that will come later on in my videos. So check that out. You've got a nice large flat and straight surface to the tabletop. If you've done everything correctly, the table would be absolutely bob on perfect. Beautiful. Absolutely perfect. So what does it bring apart from the stability? A larger working area, okay? So you've got the chamfer there, so the dust will not get stuck in there. Thanks to the T-Track, we can very easily add a feather board. So, let's test out our new fence. Now what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to swap the fence over and use a feature that I'm really going to need in my future projects. So let's swap it over. And I'm going to utilize that notch that we cut out before. So. Let's attach the fence again. As you can see, the fence itself is nice and stable. So this will come in very handy when you're doing some edge banding on uh, your carcasses, on shelves or anything like that. So you do have that lip. Obviously, this is a bit of exaggeration here. I've got it on both sides, but usually you will have it just on one side and it won't be that much. And you just want that to be flush with um, your board. Again, usually it's not <laughs> laminated chipboard. It would be plywood, anything else, just to add a nice edge to it, wooden edge like this one. So let's trim this down. And the way you set it up, obviously you need to lower your blade. So it goes underneath that slot. And basically in the teeth needs to be flush with the side of our fence. So best of all, use a square, marry it up against it. And that's why our fence is so large because when you're doing a large panel, you've got a big surface to actually push against and reference it against it. And check that out. Perfectly flush with our board. Beautifully cut. Nice edge banding on our board. Really good. And obviously because we've got the holes on all the parts and the fence in the same place, we can swap it over as well to the other side. For example, if we want to cut on this side of our table. So. And there you have it. We can use it either way, either side, plenty of versatility. Plus you've got onboard storage for all the essential just in the middle. Now, as you can see, it's quite a flexible option here for your table. So it gives you a lot of spec to add additional things, additional um, jigs to it. For example, if you want to do half laps, you can do that. If you want to do tenons, you could do that as well. And all those additions and few more will be coming in the near future to this channel to utilize this fence even more. So if you're not a subscriber, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss those videos. But what do you think? <laughs> Finally, I've got a large, nice fence that I can reference everything and not be scared of um, the fact that there's something wrong with the fence as the thickness of the board is ensuring that the fence itself is nice and straight. So 
In my case, I'm really looking forward to using it, especially um, the features for the edge banding as I do have um, quite an interesting project upcoming in September. Now I'm hoping today's video was a bit of an inspiration for you and now you can think of something adding to your table so upgrading your table so in a way and maybe adding new features and that new quality that you were looking for. And tell you what, I actually got a large playlist of other videos with some really cool projects for your workshop, jigs, uh, tool improvements and everything else. Now the playlists are just over here for you. Click on those, have a look, maybe a video will pique your interest. So hopefully I'll see you on one of those videos there. Take care.